finally, Mark Cashman, who is over here. Everybody medals and how fast Mark got up here that he uh, <laughs> did a pretty good job at the events. Um, if anybody wants to, Danielle, Mom, Dad, Matt, if you want to come over and take some pictures, you're more than welcome to. But one more hand for the for the athletes.
Building Hall. Teresa Wynn. Sebastian Piles. Vanessa Payne. I'm oh, sorry, Valentina Payne. Samantha Pinedo. Zaidi Rahi. Joseph Rivera. Maria Tobago. Justin Tyag, or Justin Tyag, sorry. And Nancy Lee. Parents, if you want to come down and take a picture. Ladies and gentlemen, the first inaugural graduating class, the Ralph Alarm County of Excellence in the Congratulations. We also have the students of the month that are on here, and now we have the biggest list of the evening, which is something several years ago that I was charged with by the Board of Education with regard to district staff attendance. Um, the teachers here, faculty, staff, just incredible dedication, uh, at least I can say over the past several years, uh, are working together to do the best for the kids. Um, I don't know, I don't, I don't know if I have to say it, but um, again, there's no place like Belmont. Um, and I've been a few different places, uh, and I travel all over the state, and uh, the dedication and time that our faculty and staff put in here, are my colleagues, uh, again, I'm just in awe of them, and it shows tonight, if you look on the agenda, all these individuals who have perfect staff attendance, uh, just an incredible feat um, to battle through illnesses and personal things, just, just personal events to make sure that our children are uh, served every day. So we want to recognize those individuals tonight. We have a certificate for them. Um, it's a long list, so maybe if we Hold off the applause to the end and we'll give a nice round of applause. Uh, I'm not sure how many of these individuals are here tonight, but please, please come up and be recognized. You deserve it. Um, and again, if they're not here tonight, you see them. If you're a student here still, if you're at home watching this, please tell them, tell these individuals thank you for your dedication. David Ackerman, 
Jennifer Alvarez, Karen Ann Andros, Cecilia Asali, Yvette Orpan, Denise Oriema, Stephanie Austin. Oh, sorry, I forgot your name was out. My apologies. I'm sorry. I'll do it in groups of like five. How's that? Alyssa Banka, Jacqueline Millares, Nancy Levere, Ashley Bidney, Katine Bido. I think I said that right. If I did, I'm sorry. Jenna Bedoglio, Carol Bono, David Brown, Diane Bruno, Lisa Burns, Deborah Campione, Nicholas Campione, Michael Capasso, Janet Carfano, Nicholas Carfano, Gerard Carpenter, Lillian Castro, Judith Katina, Michael Katina, Marlene Satrulo, Dania Chalet, Leslie Chicoma, Michael Sorelli, Carrie Collis, Nicole Canito, Jenna Constantino, Joanne Conway, Nicole Kukulez, Amanda Cruz, Andrew Cruz, Jennifer Cruz, Joseph DeFlorio, Brenda Delzio, Wendy Del Vecchio, Donna Dente, Gina Davinio, Michael Diaz, Pietro Doldi, Antonella Fasolino, Joseph Fox, Karen Franciosa, Amy Deer, Daniel Jean Grande, Roy, I'm sorry, Roy Guillermo, Denise Gizzo, Carlos Cancaves, Diana Cuarabasco. Anna Hemsley, Scott Herman, Alexa Iannola, Lisa Kistner, Victoria Lago, Nancy Liardo, Tracy Liardo. Suzanne Lewandowski, Kathleen Lorenz, Yolanda Luna, Heather McIntyre, Samantha Mazza. Terrence McCaffrey, 
Laura Michelle, Diane Milo, Lisa Modesto, Frank Molinaro, Frankie Moneca, William Montesioka, Frank Moraski, Anna Morella, Stephanie Mozika, Maya Muhan, Shannon Mulvaney, Nicole Mundy, Maria Murphy, Rosemary Nakashian, Linda Nicodemi, Taryn O'Mara, Anthony Palmieri, Joseph Palmieri, Vincent Pastor, Alessandro Percio, Diane Petschel, Genesis Puentes, Susan Rotaco, Giovanna Rizzolo, I'm sorry, Rizzolo, Anna Ruiz, Donna Rusamano, Kimberly Rusamano, Irene Sabatics, Mark Schuyler, Rosanna Schindelman, Joseph Source, Giuseppe Spatola, John Spina, Susan Tartaglia, Gerald Tepeda, Robin Torello, Norga Torres, Amanda Bellotti, Frank Wenling, Judith Worcester, Sadia Yousef, and Maria Zara. Congratulations, give them another round of applause, please. Fantastic. All right, as our as our, we continue our monthly as we continue our monthly presentations with regards to initiatives in the district, our final one for the year will be Mr. Thomas Delia. Uh, who will give us a presentation, a brief presentation on our Google initiative. Mr. Delia, if I ask the board to leave the dais, please.
hour upon it tonight, so I'm going to try to make this as short and sweet as possible. Uh, there's a lot of time, we've heard a lot of accomplishments, so in following the same vein, I'm just going to add on to accomplishments. One thing that uh, I want to talk a little bit about tonight is our Google initiative. And uh, just to talk a little bit about Google, uh, as a company, Google has literally become a household name. A uh, common phrase used today when someone wants to learn about something is going to Google it. In fact, a simple search on Google reveals that Google receives 63,000 searches every second, uh, which is roughly 2 trillion searches per year and 5.6 billion searches per day. And the average person basically conducts 3 to 4 Google searches uh, daily when you Googling those facts right now to confirm that. Uh, the truth is, Google has grown to much, much more than just a search engine company. Uh, expanding off of the search engine technologies, Google now has many educationally relevant services in which programs such as Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Slides, YouTube, and email systems, Gmail, uh, just to name a few. With ever-expanding technology demands from our students, students bring these demands to us. And a global society that has become interconnected through various technologies, the use of Google as an educational platform seems a natural organic response to our students' learning demands and societal demands as a whole. To meet such demands, we turn to Google as a platform to, to deliver such interconnected technologies. As a district technology-wise, we're in the middle of a tremendous world spread. That's the single least. Having launched a one world initiative two years ago, Dr. Tom Cook took the bold step and said that every student in Belva is going to have a device, a one-on-one -on -one initiative, as, as it's uh, commonly referred to. Next year, with the purchase of our Chrome tablets, which will be approved tonight, <laughs> it's on the agenda anyway, uh, completing our kindergarten first grade use of a one-to-one -one device. It allows individual students to now have devices in their classrooms using what will commonly be known as the Google Classroom Platform. Having first put technology in the hands of our educators for personal laptops, soon our students enjoy the same access in their classrooms to use of laptop parts. And now, most uh, recently, we've expanded to this one-to-one -one initiative with students actually bringing devices together. <laughs> However, it's not the tool that makes itself productive, it's but rather the skilled craftsperson behind the tool. As such, this year, we began a soft rollout of Google Suite. That's the Google program that houses all of the people are more familiar with Google Docs and Google Sheets. Having trained all the staff members on basics of Google, such as logging in, accessing programs, uh, uh, such as Google Classroom, we are now here to report that there has been a tremendous response to our Google initiative, leading to over 75 students that are Google trained in the district. That students, uh, I'm uh, sorry, 75 total staff and students and administrators that are Google Level 1 and Level 2 trained. I put that up against any of the best in the state. In fact, we have two Google certified trainers who led and spearheaded Mr. Fabiano and Mr. Woodring, the attorneys that even trained the secretarial staff and administrative uh, assistants in the district. So in, this, in the near future, what you're going to see is a shared paperless platform, communication at its best. So this all leads to what is Google? What does it mean? And what I uh, ask Mr. Sheridan to do is to, to WBHS put together a little short, I promise, video on what Google means to our staff and students. So Mr. Parapato, if you wouldn't mind, play the video.
There's not much to be said. Uh, just to piggyback on what uh, Mr. Began said, we are moving along with the Buildings and Grounds uh, project of the referendum and all the renovations. There were some slight hiccups, as he mentioned, but thank God everything was resolved and we're moving along. Uh, as far as personnel goes, uh, we were able to finalize three of the uh, contracts and we're waiting for the ratification of such. So everything is moving forward on that end. Not much else can be said, and there's uh, stuff that's uh, obviously on a confidential level. Thank you. Thank you, Nelson. Julie Scala. Good evening. I chair the curriculum committee with um, Liza Lopez. As we've said before, this isn't a committee that meets monthly, it meets as needed. Right now, we're waiting for the materials and resources for next year to be delivered, and then Dr. Hopko will call for a meeting when he's ready. But this time, we haven't had a meeting yet. Uh, the other committee is, I'm on as also the policy committee, but I will let Eliza talk about that one, since that's the committee she chairs. Thank you. Thank you. Erica Jaco. Good evening, everyone. I am the chair of the athletic committee. Um, we have not met yet, but um, some information I did request, and it was uh, given to me. I just want to thank Mr. Mara, who is our athletic director, for everything that he does for our athletes and students. Um, I do want to continue progress with the athletic um, director regarding exposing our children to being seen by scouts and actually taken into more of, instead of a hobby, a career. So I want to look forward to working diligently for our students to, who excel in athletics um, to make sure that they have that opportunity. I'm also co-chair in the finance committee and I always want to make sure that we are uh, spending our money efficiently, productively, and um, making sure that there's no cutting of any corners for the prosperity of our school district in whole. And Mr. Um, Michael Sheldon will be discussing further information regarding the finance because he's the chair. Thank you. Thank you, Erica. Liza Lopez. Good evening. Um, as Janice indicated with regard to, oh, I'm sorry, as Trustee Dial indicated with regard to um, curriculum, there's really not much to report, but there, as you can see by the agenda, there are a slew of our educators who have been commissioned to recite the curriculum, so I'm excited about that. Um, there's a plethora of guys that we can see. Um, and so we look forward to that work and we thank our educators for engaging in that work as well. And with regard to the policy, um, you'll, as you see on the agenda 9.18, um, the district policy 3233 has been revised. It's a minor revision, it's a slight revision. Um, I don't have the verbiage in front of me, but it is part of the agenda. So we've been um, as I said in past years, we worked to revise that, that uh, policy, um, but still we've done some additional work there to revise it um, with the help of our council. And that's really all I have to report. Thank you. Thank you, Liza. Michael Sheldon. Good evening, everyone. Uh, the purpose of these committee reports uh, is twofold. One is to let fellow trustees. Right, the time's up. Uh, the purpose of these committee reports is twofold. Uh, one, to let fellow board members know what's going on within our individual spheres, but also to inform the public about what various committees are doing to move the educational mission uh, of the district forward. Uh, with this in mind, we, uh, we had two committee meetings last Thursday. Firstly, the operations committee. Uh, attending it was Mr. Barrera, Mr. Brawlman, uh, and uh, Rich Henry, who's director of our buildings and grounds, who's not here, unfortunately, tonight, and Mr. Palladino. Um, as it has already been uh, said this evening, the referendum work is not only underway, but will be going into overdrive starting on Monday. And as was previously mentioned, if you haven't already noticed, the first real manifestation of this summer's referendum work 
is clearly visible in front of the high school. The very first new window panel, colored as Sierra Tan, just for your reference, is being, is being installed today. So over the next uh, few days, the front facade of the high school should undergo a dramatic uh, uh, improvement. Um, so stay tuned, there's going to be a lot of stuff going on for all of our schools throughout the summer. Uh, just as we did last summer, the, uh, we'll be uh, making available weekly updates so uh, anyone in the community can keep track of what's going on in the individual schools. Some of those updates have already been posted to the district's website. There's a special area under the Board of Education tab for the referendum. Uh, I've asked uh, Mr. Palatino, when he's posting these updates, we can get from our construction manager, to please uh, try to post what goes online in color. We've been getting black and white, which is nice, but color photos obviously are much better than, than black and white. Uh, as has been uh, already announced, uh, there was a little legal skirmish with uh, a couple of our, our bidders, but that's been resolved. Um, Bennett Company uh, won the contract, it was on the agenda tonight, so they'll be moving full speed ahead with the mechanical, electrical, and plumbing work with schools 5A, 9, and 10. Unfortunately, due to some complications, the bathroom work that was proposed to be done this year for schools 5A, 9, and 10 is going to be delayed until uh, next year. The exit driveway is school number seven to help uh, deal with traffic problems around school number seven. That driveway has now been paved, but uh, we need to put up a safety fence before it can be put into operation. So that obviously, the graduation taking place this week, uh, things like this won't happen until later in the summer. But that new drive, exit driveway for school number seven should be in full operation when we reopen the school year on September 23rd. Uh, let's see, the, uh, Retaining wall, some of the board members may remember we had a partial collapse of the retaining wall of school number three. Uh, the issue there was that the utility pole had to be moved before the repair work had commenced. That pole has now been moved, and I'm told that the uh, uh, repair work will be commencing this week for that retaining wall. Outdoor classroom, as you probably have noticed, the outdoor classroom amphitheater is almost finished. Um, hopefully, that will be completed as well within the next few weeks. I've asked Dr. Tonko if provided that that amphitheater is done early enough in the summer to perhaps have some local events this summer, including some outdoor concerts. Apparently, some local bands uh, are interested in performing here, so stay tuned for that. And then lastly, under operations, uh, we are, are actively working on the initiative that is to put solar panels um, at the high school and elsewhere in the district. There should be uh, many more announcements about the solar panel situation as we make our way through the second half of this year. So that takes care of the operations. Now, as far as finance is concerned, we met uh, again on Thursday. Ms. Jocko, Mr. Brawlman, and Mr. Palladino were in attendance. Uh, I asked Mr. Palladino if the A4F or uh, the board had been transmitted to the town hall. For those of you who may not be aware, the A4F is an official form that notifies the town hall, which collects the taxes. The Board of Education doesn't collect the taxes on its own. It's the responsibility of the town hall to collect the school tax levy. But to that end, it's, it's necessary for the board to inform the town hall what the school tax levy is. That form has now been officially transmitted to the municipal clerk, so that's in, that's in place. There was a little bit of a problem last year, but uh, hopefully it's been resolved this time around. Uh, I uh, asked Mr. Carolina if he could, uh, starting as soon as possible, provide the whole board with monthly uh, expenditure reports for the referendum. Now that we're moving into the, the full panoply of the referendum activity, it's important for the rest of us, especially the finance committee, to know how much we've spent, how much we've made, because uh, we may have some short goals that we need to be abreast on top of all of the finances for the referendum. Hopefully, Mr. Palatino will be able to start producing this month the report at uh, the finance committee's request. Uh, the last thing I want to mention to the board is that, uh, uh, as we're all aware, there's an effort underway right now to bring about a free pre K program uh, to Belleville. And while work is still underway to bring this to fruition, uh, you know, one of the, the plan involves potentially uh, leasing some viable space in the, the township and then uh, 
converting it into appropriate classroom space. There's apparently state money available for the pre-K program, but as I recently learned, uh, the program being uh, advocated by Senator Williams, who by the way will be our commencement speaker this Friday at graduation, that program carries with it two-year grants. Now while it's very likely that the grants will be continued, there's no guarantee, so we all need to be cognizant of the fact that we go with the pre-K program, the funding from the state is only guaranteed for the first two years. On top of that, we would have to commit a fair amount of our resources to converting whatever space we might be using into the classroom space. So there's a lot of upfront investment and no guarantees that beyond two years we would still have state funding. So as I see it, there's a bit of a risk here, and I've asked Dr. Tomko to try to do to please keep the entire board, especially the finance committee, uh, up to date on all of the negotiations and the developments so there are no surprises. I'm all the way, I, I definitely recognize the need for a pre-K program, pre-pre-K program in Belleville, but I, I don't want us to be clobbered a couple of years from now by making this big upfront investment and then realizing we're now on our own to, to fund this. This would come as a big shock to the taxpayers who would now suddenly find at least a million dollars a year in an increase in their, their tax obligations to fund the pre, -pre, -pre k program. So we're advertising it as a pre pre k program now, but I wonder if it's still going to be free in 2022. So just something for the whole board to be aware of. We need more information before we make the uh, go-ahead to uh, greenlight the pre-K program. So that's it. That's it for me tonight. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Michael. Uh, Vice President Chris Lampala. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. I am chair of the community committee um, with Ms. Dotto. So what we have coming up on the 19th is the senior clap out. Um, that gives the seniors who have graduated the opportunity to go back to their home grammar school and their cap and gown, and they walk through the hallways, and the students there have made um, you know, little baggies for them to congratulate them and wrote the notes and they play music and it gives them a chance to, you know, see who came from, from the school and it's, it's a really great event. The kids really enjoy it every year. Um, on Thursday, we have the middle school promotion ceremony. On Friday, we have the graduation out on the field. On the 26th, the township is going to be having movie night. They're going to be showing Spider-Man Into the Burst at Municipal Stadium. It starts at 6 o'clock with a classic car show. There will be popcorn and a singing contest, and the movie begins at dusk. The rain date for that is on the 27th, and there will be a second one in August, but I'm not sure what the date is for that. Um, 4th of July fireworks. Um, the festivities on the 4th of July start at 6 o'clock with a trackless train, games, inflatable rides in the DJ, and the fireworks begin at 9 o'clock. The Belleville Library is having um, Reading, Buddy, Reading Buddies, which is a one-on-one -on -one summer reading program. It's going to be on Mondays and Wednesdays from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. Um, it gives the younger kids an opportunity to be read to by older children um, to enhance their reading comprehension during the summer. If anybody is interested in participating, you can contact me and Torres, and the number is 973-450-3434. It's also an opportunity for our high school students who may be out there listening that um, they can get community service hours and they will have sign-up sheets there so you can little hours can be involved. That starts on the 24th of June and ends on the 28th of August. The Belleville Police Department, are, it has just initiated its pedestrian safety campaign. It's starting now and it's going to continue out for the summer. There's going to be moving patrols at the crosswalks as well as plain post officers walking in the crosswalks. So make sure you stop for them so that you don't get a ticket. They're warning you now. Um, and last but not least, I'm the board's representative um, at CPAC, which is the Special Education Parents Advisory Committee. Um, they met for the last time this, uh, this past week. Um, they gave out some updates on how the year went. Um, there were some vast improvements in special ed. We opened some new classrooms, and we're going to be in, adding on two more classrooms next year, um, one 
autism and I think one behavior class, if I remember correctly. Um, we offered the parents a workshop the other night. It was called Managing Technology and Social Media. And um, we all know that you know, as special ed students, they you know, have a tendency to lose something during the summer. Um, even the month that you know, you're off in August is definitely there's a learning loss. Um, so this year, because we're going to be opening school a little bit later, um, the Special Services Department kind of expanded our summer special ed program and opened it up a little bit further to students who normally would not meet the criteria, but that they felt need the opportunity to have a little bit of extra time so that they don't have as much loss by having that extra couple of weeks off in September. And I think that's it for me. Thanks. Thank you, Chris. Next, we go on to remarks from the citizens. This is on agenda items only. Please try and limit your remarks to three minutes. First, we have Mike Mignon. Yeah. Uh, excuse me one second. Not this meeting. 
OK, that's fine. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry about that. So anyway, I, I just feel it's an important conversation. OK, also, um, as you might not, not know the rigor of the curriculum, I was a math teacher 18 years, and I can tell you that it's a rigorous curriculum. You, know, you have to be able to, these kids have to be able to retain this information, and they have to be able to learn a lot of different standards, okay, in a short period of time, which leads us on to learn the test. Like the test is in March, eh? So now you have eight months to get in 10 months worth of, of material. So there's a lot more, I won't bore you to death, but I really just am looking for this to be an introduction of future conversation that we can have in state. Okay. We might not even get our Senator Ter Teresa Ruiz in on this, that she's a big advocate of parking all that, all the, all the data that goes on with it. And our first thing is, I think the reality of it is, is that it's very, very easy to pass legislation. Very easy to do that. It's a lot more difficult to put the time in to understand what it takes to actually implement that legislation. Okay, so it's great to stand up there on a platform and say how wonderful our schools are, how tough our schools are, which our schools are actually awesome here in New Jersey. Um, but it's, it's another thing to say, let's sit down, let's get the stakeholders together, and let's talk about what we need to accomplish to improve these things. Okay, so I would really uh, be looking forward to being able to share future conversations and hopefully on this conversation. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Next, Paul Dean Shore. Oh, okay. Uh, George Jack White. Uh, 
Good evening, Dr. Conner, ladies and gentlemen, for our softball program, including our JV and the freshmen who have had a standard season. And as the head coach, I would just like to thank you for your support. Uh, I would also like to recognize the hard work of my assistant coaches, Mr. Ben Lovato, and Daniel Santasuso, and our volunteer coach, Lexi Nero, as well as the back of our high school administration, specifically the director of athletics, Mr. Mara, the secretary, Mr. Sandra Gersh, our athletic director, Jenny Livio, and the Littleton the Brown Department for our outstanding seasons. And again, thank you again. Have a wonderful day at the same time. Thank you very much. Next, I need a motion on personnel uh, 1 through 18 and 20 through 49. Motion. Discussion? Yeah, just, I just want to make uh, one comment. One of the first things we're voting on is 729. Is that included in this first? I just want to make sure. Yeah. 7 through 18, 7 19, we're all in separate. 729 is included in this first round of voting, right? Yes. All right. I just want to make one, one comment. Um, as uh, many of the audience may realize, we're uh, about to hire three new administrators uh, this evening. And one of those positions is a uh, for an educational technology uh, position. I'm, I'm supporting the, uh, the hiring of the individual, but I, uh, as I uh, asked Dr. Tomko on the board, it seems, in my estimation, all of our technology positions in the district currently are occupied by males. It's been a crusade of mine to try to get more women uh, involved in key administrative positions. To that end, Dr. Tomko has made very significant improvements over the last year and a half. Might be careful. <coughs> but I, I, uh, since we are trying to get as many women as possible in our school system to pursue careers and STEM, especially computer technology, I think consistent with that we should make a, a determined effort to try to get some women involved in the technology end of our district. So I just want to make that comment. I, I, Dr. Taco said he would, would, would do so, but I would like to see down the road some women as part of our IT operations. So that's all I want to say. Any other discussion? <coughs> no further discussion? <laughs> 1 through 18 and 20 through 49. Matt Rocco. Trustee Barrera. Yes. Trustee Gatto. Trustee Jacko. Yes. Trustee Lopez. Yes. Trustee Shell. Yes. Vice President of Girl. Yes. President Girl. Yes. Uh, to the chair. <coughs> Thank you. So the uh, the resolution in question is uh, with regard to Mr. Palladino. It's a contract. Um, I appreciate the board giving me time to speak about this. Um, just for the education of the audience, uh, stakeholders, etc. Uh, give a little history with regards to the position, uh, some of the negotiations that occurred, um, what the consideration was, and uh, hopefully uh, edification of the board this evening. Uh, last year, Mr. Palladino was given the uh, position um, of business administrator, which which were he elevated from uh, assistant business administrator. Uh, the board uh, negotiating committee, for lack of a better term, the personnel committee, and myself, uh, met to discuss salary, and at that time, we regarded this, his first year, which was this past year, as a probationary period. With that being said, um, the salary was not commensurate, commensurate with um, other business administrators in the county or surrounding districts. Um, so at the time, we were basically giving Mr. Paladino, as I sit here and talk to him next to me, which is interesting, but uh, giving Mr. Paladino the, the opportunity to prove himself in a district that had uh, an extreme number of CAFR findings, was going through uh, action plans from both 
um, state auditors, um, the oversight of a monitor who is still here, um, and also other uh, additional means of change where the action plan that I put in place with Mr. Egan uh, and the board when uh, we first attempted to eliminate the deficit or an action plan to do so and to reduce the 70 plus findings was to uh, change the makeup of the business office, uh, which with the hiring and this evening of one additional part-time employee uh, basically solidifies that now. So uh, Mr. Palladino was charged with the oversight of that. He also taken on the responsibility of a major referendum um, construction project, the construction project, the bids that uh, are approved as well. Um, we also uh, added on to this contract the affirmative action officer, uh, which is a major responsibility. Mr. Leo once handled, did a great job with that. So now uh, Mr. Paladino will be taking over that responsibility. So there are some additional duties uh, that come about after the probationary period. Um, in setting a salary that you see tonight at 155, that puts Mr. Paladino at the bottom of the business administrator salaries dished in, uh, in the county. Um, we considered in, in putting that two committees, uh, two of the committees here, I, can, I considered uh, the Equal Pay Act. We also considered the comparable salaries of those individual districts, um, and those BAs with less experience, Mr. Paladino, and also the districts that were not even K-12. I also took into consideration the comparison of our own administrative salary guides, uh, which this salary at 155 would still not place Mr. Paladino second, um, one of the top um, uh, administrative employees in the district. However, he would have, um, he does have second in command hierarchical responsibilities uh, as per the hierarchy or the chart, the organizational chart. Um, we also, again, met in committee to discuss the salary. It has also been approved by the state monitor. It has also been approved by the county superintendent, who through the request of the increase, uh, I explained all of these avenues. Um, I, with, with, with uh, certainty, can tell you that this has been completely vetted. Uh, I don't think there's, there's uh, anything to uh, um, talk about with his performance. I don't think that's why we're here. I understand that the polyoptics of it, the number is, it seems to be a large number, but again, uh, if you go back to where uh, Mr. Paladino's salary began as a probationary period, you add um, what the going rate, for lack of a better term, for administrative, I'm sorry, for an affirmative action officer stipend is, um, and that's some of the uh, added responsibility that Mr. Paladino will have uh, pursuant to his job description for the next year, which will be added as I discussed with the board finance and operations committees. I think it's, uh, I, I think I could uh, reasonably say it's a justified number. So I appreciate the several minutes to discuss that. I hope uh, I can answer any other questions. Um, I'd also like to ask uh, Mr. Egan, our, our monitor, um, being a conservative. Previously, this was a, uh, a separate stipend 
to something other than Mr. Palladino, which is a $6,000 stipend. So while his salary is listed here nominally as 155, I think in mind that roughly 6,000 of that is, is what we would be spending anyway for the affirmative action stipend. Uh, I won't go down uh, memory lane too much here, but you know, for those of you that have been regulars at board meetings for the last several years, uh, you look back to the October 16 and the January 2017 meetings, which I believe are on the uh, available on YouTube through the DEA uh, YouTube channel. You know that I, uh, I was a citizen activist and I expressed uh, great reservation about Mr. Palladino and how he was being brought to Belva, but times changed since I've been a trustee working with them, uh, especially with the referendum. Uh, I, I can only sing the praises of Mr. Palladino. Uh, I, he, he has been bombarded by me by late night email messages, sometimes even before the sun rises, and usually within an hour or two, I'm sending him a request for data, uh, which is critical for me to make some judgment about referendum expenditures or anything else in the district. Uh, he usually responds to it almost immediately. And I know firsthand, as chair of the operations committee, and what I've been doing to, to stay fully on top of the referendum work, how much extra commitment he's made to making sure the, the referendum is executed properly. There have been a ton of extra meetings that he's been faithfully attending to make sure that the referendum uh, is responsive to our students, our teachers, and our taxpayers. Um, so, with that said, I, I believe that the salary increase, which is just to kind of equilibrate the scales, could bring him up to where any other BA that we would bring in would be starting at, that this, this salary is justified. You have to keep in mind that this increase this year is not going to happen every subsequent year. This increase is basically to, to say, well, you've proven yourself, you're an effective BA, and uh, we uh, believe you deserve to be treated comparably to all your other peers, not only in Essex County, but throughout the state of New Jersey. So uh, I believe that this increase is uh, more than justified. And with that, thank you. Thank you, Michael. Any other discussion? Yes. Um, regarding the salary increase, in my opinion, it doesn't only have to do with quality, but it also has to do with um, a big amount of money. Uh, it's going from 131,713 to 155,000, which is a $23,287 difference minus that $6,000 um, stipend, meaning it's a $17,287 raise in one year. And as part of the, as a co-chair to the finance committee, I have to um, respectfully say that I need to be conservative. And I also consider that one year um, of excellent work I've been here, um, it's just not enough for me to make that determination and support it. It's not about the quality, no one's questioning the quality, but in general, I think that the school district in a whole involving teachers, etc., when we are in a financial um, position to make those type of increases, I will be the first to support it. But I currently don't think we are. Thank you. Thank you, Erica. Any other discussion? Yeah, just a point of clarification. Uh, it's been said. Um, uh, Mike, you spoke once, we don't want to go back to that. This is a discussion, so I just want to bring up one point, which I think is very salient to what we're about to do. It's been said consistently tonight that Mr. Palladino has been here for one year. I don't believe that's true. I think he's been here for almost two and a half years. I think he started in early 2017. So he, it's not that he just gone through a one year trial period. He's been with us now for almost two and a half years. I think he has proved, more than proved, his effectiveness as a highly competent No one's questioning the effectiveness, Michael. I just want to say correct. Financially, we're not in a position. That's the right thing. He hasn't been here for one year. He's been here for two and a half years, almost two and a half years. OK. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Erica. Any other discussion? 
Matt, roll call, please. Trustee Barrera. Yes. Trustee Dada. Yes. Trustee Chaco. No. Trustee Lopez. Yes. Trustee Sheldon. Yes. Vice President Mike Brown. Yes. President Brown. Yes. Did I have a motion on uh, curriculum and instruction 8-1? Any, any discussion? No discussion, roll. Trustee Barrera. Yes. Trustee Gatto. Uh, Trustee Jacko. Yes. Trustee Lopez. Yes. Trustee Sheldon. Yes. Vice President Lane Brown. Yes. President Brown. Yes. Uh, uh, just an explanation, there's a typo on 918, it says first and second reading, this is going to be just the first reading on 918. Did I have a motion on 91 through 923? Discussion? Yeah, Jonathan will speak on that. Yeah, real, real quick, Mr. Sheldon, you, 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 you can, the board can always waive a reading if it wants to. You have to vote to waive by law requiring two readings, which you're permitted to do it in great circumstances. And this is no reason to have rushed this one. We'll do this tonight and at the next meeting, you know, whatever that is, we'll talk we'll the same. Thank you. And the other, and oh, we have yeah. Any discussion? Roll call. Trustee Barrera. Yes. Trustee Gatto. Yes. Trustee Jacko. Yes. Trustee Lopez. Yes. Trustee Sheldon. Yes. Mr. President Lambrella. Yes. Trustee Crawford. Yes. Could I have a motion on 10 1 through 26? Any discussion? Uh, I, I would like just to work with the edification of the public. Dr. Taco already answered my uh, question about 1019. And Dr. Taco emailed me the just uh, since we're, we're spending almost $162,000 for additional computer equipment, uh, I would like Dr. Taco to just uh, let the community know for the record what exactly is being Yes, Mr. Sheldon. Uh, Mr. Billy had mentioned it too. So when we first decided several years ago to do the one-to-one -one initiative, um, we wanted to go K-12. That was our goal. Um, we then um, had some leasing that we were able to do 6 through 12, and then uh, we were able to go second grade through 12. Uh, or the, the, the remaining classes. So now, with this, these additional monies, they ex extend into devices for our kindergarten and first grade students as well. So now we would be, uh, it would be optimal to say we are complete one-to-one. -one. Uh, we originally started all this just so everyone knows, um, when we first talked about one-to-one, -one, we first had to make sure our Wi-Fi was one-to-one. -one. So that was our first infrastructure project when I first got here. And now we can say that we are legitimately after this approval uh, and we actually get the devices in hand uh, one to one. So appreciate the support on this and uh, from the administrative team and teachers. Uh, I think this is a great day for the community. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. I, I, I'm all in favor of expanding the Chromebook initiative. My only concern is that uh, in the hands of kindergarten students and, and first graders, how uh, much damage those Chromebooks. They have to be waterproof them or something to protect them. I have to say, I, I, that is a concern that we have. Um, but for those of us who have young children in kindergarten, I mean, it's at my house.
my son's a little older now, but my youngest, when he was in kindergarten, I forget it. He was showing me stuff. So, I mean, it's, it's really, it's really out there now. So, I, I think we're going to monitor it. There's, there's protective cases that we've ordered for, to put around them. Um, again, we're, we become that type of district where we want to be progressive, let's try it. We could always, um, if we had to scale it back, we would, but I, I don't foresee that. But, but I understand the concern. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? Roll call. Trustee Barrera. Yes. Trustee Gatto. Uh, Trustee Jacko. Yes. Trustee Lopez. Yes. Trustee Sheldon. Yes. Vice President Lane Brown. Yes. Chairman, no part, no part on 10.7. And President Brown. Yes. Do you have a motion on 11 1 through 12? Motion. Second. Discussion? No discussion. Roll call. Trustee Barrera. Yes. Trustee Gatto. Yes. Trustee Jacko. Yes. Trustee Lopez. Yes. Trustee Sheldon. Yes. Vice President Lamprell. Yes. Take the new part on check 076543. And President Brown. Yes. Could I have a motion to open it up for our remarks from the citizens? All in favor? Aye. Uh, remarks from the citizens. Uh, are these short?
think we need to pass that message, that legacy, that way of thinking to our students so that we have a greater attendance and we can improve and all that across the board. Uh, I also want to wish Ms. Correnti a very great retirement and good life to be had. Uh, she did many years of service. I worked with her as a parent when my daughters were here and it was a pleasure to deal with her. So all the best to her. With that being said, thank you everyone. Enjoy your summer. We'll see you in August. Thank you, Nelson. Janista. Good evening. Um, I'd like to take this time to thank everyone for coming tonight and watching our live stream. Uh, every month we recognize students, staff, and their accomplishments and achievements throughout the year, and it's truly a testament to their dedication to everyone's education that, that we have here in our, our bubble program. I'd like to congratulate those that have retired and wish you a happy retirement. Um, I hope everyone has a safe summer, be safe. Congratulations to our graduates, their parents, and the teachers who have helped them get there. And I also just like to take a moment to let you know some ways encouraging literacy. Uh, Barnes and Noble has a summer reading journal program where your students read eight books and they go in, they can get a free book in the month of August. You just have to go online and download the reading journal. That's awesome for parents to take advantage of and really promote literacy among our students. Thank you. It was an honor um, to be at the Varsity Club Breakfast honoring our athletic students. Um, it, all, it was also an honor to be at the scholarship night. I'm very proud of all the students and the teachers' efforts to make sure that our students achieve and academically. And it was an honor to be at the annual Ralph Fallon Academy of Engineering and Science night event. I really enjoy seeing the students be creative, innovative, and uh, they showed me uh, a robotic that had won first place in their category that they spent less than $60 on. It's really amazing that our kids are using every resource possible and being creative with it. I also want to congratulate all the staff tonight that were honored for their attendance. Thank you very much. This Friday is the graduation of the class of 2019, and I want to tell the class that always have a goal list. Never forget your family, and dedication pays off. I look forward to being a chaperone at their project graduation trip, as always, and um, look forward to seeing you in August. Thank you. Thank you, Erica. Nice to us. Good evening, everyone. Uh, just a few quick comments. Uh, 
I want to uh, congratulate once again all of the uh, first year graduates of the Ralph Neon Academy. Um, I don't know if uh, it was noticed by the audience, but the uh, students in this class uh, did something very unique and uh, something very notable. Usually when there's a cluster of students up here, they're all squeezing together, trying to huddle together to get into the camera shot. But not this group. This group did something I don't remember any other group of students doing in all the years that it was the audience were up on this dais. They uh, very quickly used their engineering problem solving skills and started to move up the staircase to have a tiered effect so that they could all be easily uh, photographed in the same, same frame. So already we're seeing the, uh, the fruits of all the labor here. We've got a, a, a group of students who obviously are already developing very strong engineering and science problem solving skills. So kudos to them and to our teachers who are helping with this program. Um, as part of the Ralph Neon Academy, I uh, had the pleasure of attending the engineering science night a couple of weeks ago. Um, again, remarkable projects that our students are working on, really trying to do things that are going to make important impacts on our future. A lot of the uh, projects were either uh, dealing with serious health issues, like helping diabetics. Uh, many of the other projects dealt with environmental issues, green initiatives, and some of the clever uh, project ideas that they develop to begin scrubbing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, which is the principal greenhouse gas. So, you know, just really wonderful stuff. If you haven't gotten to one of these presentations uh, next year in June, the next one, please attend. I think you'll be really, really impressed uh, by what you see. But if that wasn't enough, it was something really remarkable that happened uh, during the engineering night. I get a tap on my shoulder and turn around and it's me of the home. She came back to, to attend it. She's doing really well and pleased to report. She just finished her first year at Stevens. She's uh, pursuing an undergraduate degree in mathematics, or who knows, maybe in a few years from now, when she doesn't opt for a graduate school right away, maybe she'll want to come back to Elbow and be one of our highly qualified math teachers. So it was wonderful seeing her uh, the other week. Um, as far as uh, Mike Mignon's comments uh, were concerned about all these rapid changes to standardized testing and curriculum changes, I share his concerns. Uh, often these tests really uh, only uh, look at proficiency and don't really have the ability to measure improvement. Uh, this is a long-standing argument in educational circles. If you follow the uh, Senate confirmation hearings uh, a couple years ago, uh, approving uh, contractual uh, commitments with a number of outside vendors uh, for the next academic year. But if you scrutinize that list, you'll see within it there are at least 13 charter schools listed. And I'm pointing this out because some of our leading community activists who aren't here tonight often uh, bemoan and castigate the board for reckless spending. But the truth of the matter is that we have money. How do we have to send this out of the district? We send a lot of our kids outside of help for their education something that Dr. Tonko and others are acutely aware of and have been doing everything in their power to try to bring this population back to Delaware, uh, ultimately to save local taxpayers a little bit with their, their tax bills. So uh, with that said, I hope you're able to attend this Friday's graduation ceremony. Uh, starting time at 7, 7 p.m. 6.30, the speaker, Senator Ruiz, will be addressing the class of 2019. So if you have a, a bit of uh, extra time, please try to attend the, uh, the graduation ceremony. With that said, thank you and have a good evening. Thank you, Michael. Uh, graduation is 7 o'clock. Vice President Chris Lampro. Um, okay, so when Coach Cam wants to participate in our sports, and we're definitely winning more, and we're definitely getting ourselves out there. Um, the district art show was last week, and it's always nice to see that the students, you know, have that artistic ability along with everything else, because creativity is key, and, and I think the success of, of being a person because everybody has to have their own kind of creativity and it shows when the kids are doing their artwork and they're doing their projects out there and it's, it's really nice to see. Um, don't mind me everybody. Yeah, a letter will go out.
remind everybody to read. I don't know that we're going to read enough to get Dr. Tonko on a roof, but you know we can give it a go. Um, the Finance Committee. Last um, meeting, you mentioned meeting with the auditor about the finding for the repeated findings and how we're going to correct them. Can you provide the board at some point with what the corrective action is going to be? Um, and last but not least, um, everybody have a great summer. It's been a great year. I think this is rounding out my third or fourth summer, getting ready for summer vacation. And it's always nice to see how the year ended, because it always ends so wonderfully with so much going on. And we get to see what the children have accomplished all year long. And I look forward to seeing you know, what, the, what next year brings. So everybody have a good summer. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. I'd like to congratulate all the award recipients. I'd also like to thank uh, my fellow board members for working together. It's uh, once in a while we have a little spits back and forth and we don't agree on everything. But in the uh, big picture, we work together for the same goal. Uh, I'd like to thank the uh, school district staff for keeping everything together. And thank you everyone that attends our meetings and makes comments. And have a great summer. Thank you. Motion to adjourn the meeting. All in favor?